Watson from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Randy. How are you? I'm doing good. Awesome, awesome. We're getting ready to officially wrap up the year now as we, we are. are just days away from We are. We can, we can say Merry Christmas yes, and a Happy New Year. We can. To all. So I'm trying to figure out what season it is, though, because <laughs> earlier this week I well, was Monday, driving through yeah. snow. Uh -huh. It's kind of cold and blustery, and now it's okay out yeah. there, and I'm seeing the forecast, maybe 50 by the weekend. Uh -huh. Christmas so, Day, 50 and rain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is spring, winter, summer, fall. It's a combination autumn, week. All yeah. rolled into Mother that. Nature's so, giving us a little bit of I'm not going to complain about not having to drive through snow. Just uh, saying. I know. I was hoping maybe for at least a, a white Christmas. But yeah, yeah. I don't think we're. It'll be white that. somewhere. Yeah, I remember Just probably not here. I remember many uh, uh, Christmas Eve services coming, going into the church. It wasn't yes. snowing and coming out. It and was, it was yes. snowing and heavily <laughs> at times. So. Yes. Well, it'll make for safer travels. <laughs> yes. Now you just have to wear your galoshes because yeah. it'll be a little wet, a little muddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, end of year. Um, we always have a few folks that are looking at those end of year gifts. Um, so it's, we still have time. Um, wanted to make a note about um, some of the holiday happenings at our office. Um, our office will be closed on Friday all day and then again on Monday um, in honor of the Christmas holiday. And then we will be closing at noon on December 30th. Um, for New Year's and then be closed New Year's Day and as you open back up again after the first of the year. Um, we will have staff there at all the other regular times so okay. if you're looking for that end of year gift, if you're looking for that perfect gift, we, we have a few people that come in this time of year and say I'm shopping for somebody that says they have everything, they don't want any more <laughs> stuff, they're trying to give me stuff so instead of giving them stuff I'm going to make a donation to a fund in their honor. There you go. And that's a, a gift that we'll continue to give after Christmas yes. is gone and into the future. So, um, so if you're looking for that end of year gift, you can stop by and make that gift now. Yeah. And you'll have a, lots of places and options for them to do. Lots of places and options to go. So, um, so today, since it is almost the end of the year, we kind of wanted to do a, a year in review, and it's always fun to kind of look back and see what has happened over the year. It, it kind of gets scary too at times. It does. How busy and how things, it does. how sometimes, successful things were. Sometimes it's really neat to kind of see this all laid out in front of you yeah. and just thinking, wow, <laughs> we did a lot of things. We had a yeah. lot of people that helped us do some pretty, pretty significant things this year. So um, one thing we would, that's fresh in our memories is Giving Tuesday. Thanks for coming yeah. over. No, yeah, great time, great Ho turnout. Hopefully the lunch was great. It was awesome. And we, there were a number of times we had standing room only, so <laughs> I appreciate everybody that showed up for that. It was a great day um, as well. Had some great opportunities. Um, a few things going on that day. Um, we had a couple of matches that were sponsored by Rapid View. Um, thanks to Rex and Chris and Matt, um, we were able to meet matching goals for the youth center and the Fulton County Parks. Um, we heard from both of those folks on the radio that day about how they're impacting the community. Um, we also had the chance to hear from Julie at the theater. Yes. That's one of the things that I'll mention on my list here. We, we couldn't go without saying Times Theater is now open. That's right. Pretty cool. It is. Um, we also heard from um, some of the guys with Pike Lumber Company. Mm -hmm. Of course this was um, an opportunity for us to honor. We've been doing a Lifetime Philanthropy Award. We've had some families that have been honored through that, and this was the first year that we, we honored a company, Pike Lumber, um, one of those, we describe it as a corporate citizen. Um, an organization that really has, has involvement in the community and supports the community, and when you have parks that are named for mm -hmm. individuals in the company, and um, you have employees that volunteer their time and get involved in the community and are really supported by the company. Um, and a lot of things that happen in Akron happen because Pike Lumber mm -hmm. Company gets behind that. We've got a great community. Um, so congratulations again to Pike Lumber Company. Um, the other thing that we have going on and still have going on, Lilly Endowment. We appreciate Lilly Endowment. Um, they are offering us a 
two for one match on gifts to community funds cool. that help us make grants. We'll talk about that list here in a bit. Um, but we have the opportunity to raise $375,000. Lilly Endowment will match that with $750,000, awesome. so two for one gift. Um, and we've raised just over $145,000 of that goal. Mm -hmm. um, we have through the end of 2025, or when we meet our $375,000 math. Okay. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're sharp with math, you realize that we're yeah. over three years, we're already more than, yeah. more than a third of the way into that. <laughs> so thank you to everybody who joined us for Giving Tuesday. Um, thanks to WRLI for being there. Um, had a good time. It was great to see a lot of faces. I think this is actually the most people we've ever had come through. So yeah. um, we had to put people in corners and stand. Not because they were bad. Yeah. No, just not because they were bad, just because everybody was so good. <laughs> so the only um, place is left. It, it's a really great day to, to see people be encouraged. Um, thank you to everybody who gave. Um, over $194,000 in donations came in during the event. Um, and then with the matching dollars that will come in from Lily Endowment, that's um, getting almost to half a million dollars. Wow, that's awesome. I think it was 449000 is the official total once all the matches are in. So um, thank you to everybody who participated in that. Thank you for making that event possible because the main reason why we can do that is because we've had donors that have supported us throughout the year. So. Giving Tuesday. Yes. It was a good time. It was a good time. We're already looking forward to it for next year. Now we just got to make it even better next year. Make it even better. So, um, so this today, like I said, I spent some time in the last couple of days just kind of looking back and reflecting on some of the things that the foundation has been able to do over the past year with the help of donors. Um, and I wanted to start off, um, you know, every, every year we lose a few significant people. Um, one of the great things about my role is I get to meet a lot of great people. Um, sometimes that leads to losing some very special people in our community. So um, I'm, this is not an exhaustive list, but a couple names that came to mind um, throughout the year. When I mentioned the name Stacy Carvey Shaneholz, um, you think about one of the ultimate community supporters. So you couldn't turn around at a school event without Stacy being there and encouraging or helping and um, a, a pretty significant figure in our community and her name is is living on through some things at the school. Um, I mean, there's a there's been Stacy's Closet yeah. established, a really neat opportunity to help support youth in our community that Stacy was supporting. So mm -hmm. this is her legacy carrying on. We also have a scholarship that um, Stacy's family created in her memory that will continue to support the kids that um, she cared about. So, um, one of those significant figures. Um, when we talk about Akron and we talk about the Community Foundation, um, another significant figure we lost this year was Dean Baker. Dean was one of those men that I would describe as quiet wisdom. He listened well. When he spoke, you should listen because he usually had something important to say. And just a, a significant figure, he was a, um, one of the early on foundation board members. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Dean um, for that, um, making sure that we have this opportunity for people in the community and, and supported um, the foundation. Him and, and his wife Susie have created a couple of funds that help with community grants, with scholarships, with things in the community. So. Um, Dean was one of those pretty significant figures in our community that um, will be missed. So both Dean and Stacy are a couple people that, that come to mind, and I apologize if I missed anybody significant, but those were just two that came to my mind that um, really have had an impact on me. So, so year in review. Some things happened throughout the year. It did. Some good things. It was a busy year. So we had a lot of things going on. Um, one of the things that I was able to participate in was the Mutz Leadership Academy, um, a really neat program. Um, John Mutz is a pretty significant figure in the history of Indiana, um, and we had the opportunity to hear directly from him and, and learn about some of his um, dealings. We talk about things like him being a lieutenant governor in the state of Indiana. 
um, had led some significant organizations. And we talked about Lilly Endowment. Part of the reason why we have community foundations in each county is because Lilly Endowment offered their gift program, Give Indiana Funds for Tomorrow. There may be a quiz on that at some point in the future. Um, but John was the president of Lilly Endowment when that program was developed. So um, he has a, a significant impact in community foundations um, really existing. If you think about before 1990, there were 12 community foundations in the state of Indiana. Wow. Now every county has at least one. We actually have 94, so if you do the math, there's 92 <laughs> counties and 94 community foundations, so a couple have two. Um, but it was, it was neat to participate in this and hear about some of the the ways philanthropy is impacting our state as a whole. Um, there were 23 folks in the class, um, and some of us were from community foundations, but there were a lot that weren't. So it was a, it was a great time to, to learn about philanthropy, how the impact is happening. And I, I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, it was a pretty exhausting program because the days were full, but I really felt like every time I came back from one of these classes, I had something that was relevant, whether it was something that we just talked about at the foundation here locally or something that we were thinking about or something that we were working on. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was neat to have those resources. So that was a great opportunity. Um, a couple things that we were able to do throughout the year. Um, Bridges Out of Poverty, we held a, a workshop, brought in a national speaker. And that's one of those programs that you walk out of it with a a little bit different understanding when we start talking about generational poverty. A poverty simulation that we held in conjunction with the Bridges Out of Poverty. It's always interesting when people experience yeah. that month in the life of somebody dealing with poverty. Yeah. How different it is. How, how people get in trouble for dealing drugs because that's the way that they support their family or you know what I have to make a choice on paying my mortgage or other things. So. A really eye-opening experience. Um, I'm not sure if this is a highlight or maybe a, a trial, but we had a new grant application software. It's something that we've been working on for a while, so now that people can complete a grant application online. Some people love it, some people <laughs> are okay with it, tolerate it, some people just call us and say, I can't figure out any of this. And, um, that's okay too. That's, that's been a great process. If you're one of those folks that say, I've, I've got a great idea, but I just can't figure this out, yeah. always give us a call. We'll, we'll try and help you out. We don't want to make it difficult for folks to, to do that. So thank you to everybody who, who worked through the issues and the, the details of this new grant application software. Um, some other things going on. I think we mentioned the Times Theater. We did. They had a big thing happen this yeah, year. Sure did. I mean, when you open a theater that's been closed for a few years. It's almost getting ready to be a year. It is. February 14th, yeah. I hear there's a big party plan. Big party. So put that put that date on your calendar. But um, Times Theater was one of those organizations that, you know, it's been going on for a number of years, but we were able on Valentine's Day to celebrate the opening of the Times Theater. Yeah. And think about how many times my family had the opportunity to enjoy some Christmas movies uh, this year. I think awesome. there's still a couple more planned. Still got a few days left. So I got to ask you, Die Hard Christmas movie? <laughs> no, I keep hearing that. That's that's a that's a, that's a big uh, big controversial question going around right now. For me, it's a yes. Sure, uh, I, I'm saying Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So sure, why not? 23rd, you can go see Die Hard at the can. theater. Yeah, right before Christmas. It'd be fun. It'd be a good time. So, um, a housing study. Um, Fedco has been very involved in, in getting this going. We were able to support this with some grant dollars. Um, kind of interesting. I had a couple of friends that were looking for houses this year, and I know one of them, after the fourth offer, they were able to get a house. Kind of a difficult thing, but. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the impact that that has on our community. You know, we talked about scholarships. Yes. We've got a few scholarships. Just a few. We do have a scholarship application available right now. So if you are a high school student and are planning to graduate, um, fill that out, nicf.org. Um, I know we have students working on that right now because we've got a question this morning. So <laughs> if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Shannon Berger, our scholarship coordinator. But um, when we look at the scholarships, we, we have a 
about 65 right now that different high school students qualify for. Um, when you think about over $200,000 in support for scholarships, you know, it's a lot of work. But I always tell people one of the most encouraging things that I do is get the opportunity to review scholarship applications. When you look at the impact kids have made during their high school careers and you think about the great things that are to come, it's really an encouraging process. And, and part of scholarships is the financial opportunity, but part of that is, think about this, when you get a scholarship award, somebody has looked at your scholarship application mm -hmm. and says, you know what, I believe in you enough that we want to help support you financially. Yeah. We think you'll be a success and we'd like to encourage you in this yeah. way. So it's great to great to go through that process. Something else we've worked on throughout the year um, was Charity Tracker. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple of interns. Um, I don't know if Delaney's working right now, but shout out to Delaney. Um, Kim was also one of our interns this summer who worked on this project. Um, Charity Tracker is a, a resource for nonprofits in the community to be able to share some information, make services more efficient, find services for clients. Um, so we'll be doing more with that after the first few years, getting more organizations involved with that. So um, a wonderful opportunity there. Um, Fulton County Facebook scavenger hunt. Oh, we had a little yes. fun this summer. Did, those, those did you recognize fun. any of the locations? Uh, a, a couple. A okay. couple yeah. Some of them were pretty easy, and there yeah. were a few that were pretty cryptic yeah. that if you didn't hadn't been there, you wouldn't know. So yeah. thanks to everybody that participated in that. That's just kind of a fun thing that, again, our interns helped with and um, really highlighted some of those organizations that we've been able to grant mm -hmm. to. Maybe tested everybody's knowledge yeah, of the yeah. community and recognize. One of my favorites, you'll, you'll like this, we had a fire hydrant in one of the uh -huh. pictures. Do you recognize the fire station? Yeah. And the lighter sport. So uh -huh. I had a few people that I think had been there and knew exactly where, exactly it, was, where so. it was. Exactly where it was, yeah. Um, something we did this summer, uh, nonprofit workshops. We partnered with the Chamber of Commerce and, and we're able to offer this to 15 different nonprofits in our community, some information about um, some things like board training, education, grant applications, uh, analyzing the impact that you're making. Some of those things that um, a lot of organizations don't always have the time for. Um, because we've got a lot of amazing nonprofits in our community that make Fulton County a great place to live. And, and our goal is to help be able to support some of those. So um, thanks to the Chamber for partnering with us on that. and. And thanks to all the organizations that participated and hopefully it was worth their time. I think it was because I'm still getting comments saying, you know, I learned this and we use mm -hmm. this now. So um, a great way to be able to support our community. Um, something else we were able to do, Food Pantry Summit. Yes. Talking about nonprofits. Um, if you've never been to one of the food pantries locally, um, those are some amazing organizations mm -hmm. that help people live on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, think about if you didn't have food, what would you do? Um, these food pantries are doing an amazing job, so we were able to provide a food pantry summit, have some conversations about food pantry, and uh, we had some topics about housing, um, showed a video talking about the working hungry, about um, families that are working as much as they can but just can't make ends meet. So I'll say that word inflation, that's affected a lot of families over the past year. So um, thank you to all the food pantries that are making an impact in our community. Women's Giving Circle. What better way to watch a video grants than on the big screen. <laughs> We're able to enjoy the Times Theater for that evening and go out and see the impact, had five organizations that we were able to grant to, um, the Recovery Cafe, a cast and robotics program, Liberty Township Park, the Imagination Library and the Fulton County Animal Center all received grants from the Women's Giving Circle. Thanks to all the, the women that are a part of this program. Um, when you think about the dollar amount of $90,000 in grants, and that's because uh, there are members every year that make a $120 contribution, it's pretty cool to see how that group has impacted the community. I'll say Gift 7 wrapped up. Gift 8, yeah. what we're in right now. Remember what GIFT stands for? Give Indiana funds for tomorrow. There you go. So, um, endowment funds and help us build those. So you think about that and all these 
throughout all eight stages. Um, donors have made donations and because of those donations, we're able to make grants in the community. So thanks to everybody who participated in that process. So here's a number, I looked this up yesterday. Um, throughout 2023, okay. the Community Foundation has been able to give over a million dollars in Fulton County in grants and scholarships. Wow. You think about that number, you think about that all came from local dollars and the support that Lilly Endowment has provided. Um, but without donors, think about a million dollars less going to nonprofits, going to students, going to support projects in our community, supporting organizations. Um, it's really an amazing thing to think about when we look at that number. So, so we talked about some of the year in review. What I wanted to read through, I'm just going to read through our list of grants. So this is what $265,000 in community grant sounds like. Local housing study, Food Finders Mobile Food Bank, Akron Music in the Park, Grace Mops Program, Rochester City Parks, Fulton County Hope, Liberty Township Park, Akron Parks, Uni Union Township Park, United Ministries of Fulton County, Fulton County EMA Volunteer Safety Equipment, Rochester Youth Baseball League Fencing and Dugouts, American Legion Post 36 Parking Lot Renovations, Fulton County Preschool Project, Charity Tracker for Nonprofits, The Outlet Youth Center, Guardians Advocate Program, Macmillan Center Health Education Programs, Beaver Dam Preschool Technologies Needs, Junior Achievement Fulton County Program, Kiwana Community Food Pantry Emergency Generator, Rochester Parks Butterfly Garden, Fulton County Animal Center Large Mix Fix, Rochester Downtown Partnership, the Nickel Plate Trail Festival, Times Theater, Charbel Studio, Kiwana's Heart, Kiwana Fall Festival, Fulton County Council on Aging, Transpo Van Purchases, Fulton County Habitat for Humanity, Office Space Construction, Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry, Meet the Need Program, Fulton County Firemen's Association, Automatic CPR, Lucas Devices, Newcastle Township, Talma Community Building, Roof Replacement, Cy Oda's Eye, Art Banner Contest, Fraternal Order of Police, Number 143, Shop with a Cop Program, Fulton County Historical Power Association, Santa House Construction, Recovery Cafe Program, United Ministries Christmas Basket Program, Times Theater Operating Support, and Compassionate Health Center. So you think about those organizations that we've been able to impact because of donors' contributions over the years, and these are contributions that came in during gift eight, gift seven, gift six, gift five, all the way down to one. And, and that's really the beauty of it. Donors have given to community funds to address current community needs. Mm -hmm. Now those donors that gave 30 years ago didn't know that the Times Theater was gonna be reopened as a historic theater or that the Compassionate Health Center would be open to serve folks that can't afford medical care or that Santa would need a new house. <laughs> Check out Santa, you can see him waving at you, you from 31, you I drive past him every day or that fire departments would need Lucas devices to save lives, or that we'd have an awesome animal center here that helps control the pet population, you know, that, that thing. help control the pet population, yeah. have okay. pet spayed or neutered. Thanks, Bob. Yep. <laughs> um, we've got some awesome parks, you know, before we started, before the foundation started supporting some of the local parks. We didn't have those county parks and, mm -hmm. and some city parks we've been able to add. And Akron has been able to add parks. And um, Union Township and Liberty Township both upgrade their parks. So um, some pretty awesome things. Um, you think about the food that's needed, food pantries. They've, they've been around for a while. Um, who would have thought 30 years ago that we'd have the significant housing shortage that we have now? Mm -hmm. So things like that. Um, the Youth Center pretty cool organization that's that's helping kids just have a safe place to be and, and providing resources for them. Um, the Kiwana Fall Festival. When, when the gift program and the community foundation started, you know, Kiwana used to have a festival and right. there were some key people that, that brought that back and some very significant people that are 
that are continuing that legacy of activities in our community. And you think about, you know, I never really thought about how active Transpo was until COVID happened. And all of a sudden you look around and you don't see the vans driving around. Yeah. And as I was walking here, I saw two van, Transpo vans yeah. driving folks to appointments. So a lot of these awesome things where you know, these community funds really address these current community needs. And it's, it's neat to see how we can help things get started, help things continue, help things grow. And if you think about that list that we just read or the things that we talked about, what would happen if we didn't have those in our community? There'd be some pretty significant holes. So, um, so as we reflect over the past year, um, it's, it's really amazing to look at that and say, you know, $265,000 in community grants over a million dollars in support to organizations and students and needs in our county. Um, it, it's really an overwhelming number when you think about that and just a huge thank you to the donors that make this possible because because you believed in our community, because the community foundation existed, because we had volunteers that stepped up early on, those Dean Bakers in our community that stepped up and said, you know what, this is a good idea, we need to get this going. Um, folks like that have made a significant impact and, can, and will continue to make a significant impact in our community as, as we go forward. So as we think about the end of the year, I just want to say thank you to everybody, whether it's your time that you've donated to help make Fulton County a better place, um, whether it's your knowledge, saying, hey, I know about this or I can help with this whether it's your treasure, the donations that you make, all of these go to help the community foundation make an impact in the community. Without donors and without volunteers, we wouldn't be standing here today. So as we close out the year, just that, that note of appreciation to everybody that steps up and says, you know what, somebody should do something about that and I may be somebody that can make a difference and because somebody stepped up, we can stand here and talk about all these great things going on. So, and you still have plenty of uh, plenty of time as we plenty get here time. to yep. uh, to we still to. get that uh, 2023 donation yep. in. And we need to make an end of year yeah. gift. This is a perfect time to do it. And um, we'd love to talk to you if you have questions. Of course, we have um, a number of funds, mm -hmm. over 200 funds in Fulton County that benefit different things. Or you know, it's not uncommon for somebody to walk in the door and say, I want to support this specific cause, so I'm going to create a new fund. So if you have questions about what the Community Foundation is doing, we have an idea for our community, whether it be a fund, a grant, a scholarship, um, all of those things, we'd love to talk to you about that. Um, we can be reached by phone, 574-224-3223. Check us out online, nicf.org. High school students, you got some break time coming up. I know you're probably not listening right now, but <laughs> mom and dad or grandma and grandpa may be listening. So take the opportunity at Christmas break to complete some scholarships, nicf.org, and you click on the Fulton County. There's a scholarship link there. Um, check that out. We'd love to help support you in your educational goals. Um, you can always check us out on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation or stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about how we can help make Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. Give us those holiday hours again. Okay, so we will be closed this Friday, the 23rd, okay. and then again on the 25th for the Christmas holiday. Um, and then our office will be closing at noon on December 30th for New Year's Eve, and then it'll be closed on the 1st, but then we'll be open back up on the 2nd on Monday. There so, you go. Stop in. Love to see you. Brian, thanks for everything you do. Uh, have a, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll look forward to more great things in 2024. Looking forward to it, Randy. Brian Johnson of Fulton County Community Foundation here on his monthly program. That's going to do it for the morning show of the Trading Post. We'll be back again.